So um, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, two uh, tools, but primarily Hydra. Uh, so myself, I work at Intel, uh, but Hydra was developed at Facebook Research, so it's from Meta. And I'm also going to mention a tool called MLflow, uh, which is now curated by the Linux uh, Foundation. Um, so what is Hydra and what are we trying to solve here? So when we're doing data science experiments or machine learning experiments, we have. It's okay. All right. It's okay. Um, you run into the problem that you have um, quite a few things to keep track of. You have your data set, you have your model, you have your algorithms, parameters, optimizers, and so on. So. Even though the Pythonic way of writing things is to keep interfaces very simple, with data science experiments, we end up having a lot of uh, parameters to keep track of, sometimes dozens of different parameters. And this is actually science. We're doing science, meaning that we're uh, making experiments that we don't really know the outcome of. We're making an educated guess that this set of parameters will be the best one, but we really have to test, and only after we train our model, test our model, do we know the answer if this is the right uh, set of parameters or another set of parameters might be better. So because we have to uh, make many of these experiments, the, um, sorry, this, is, this keeps happening. This will be better. Um, because this, uh, this, uh, the number of uh, experiments we have to make we have to keep track of all the different combinations of parameters that we tried in order to uh, explain what worked best and in order to reproduce it. So these problems, managing complex configurations, making them traceable and reproducible, is what we're trying to solve here. And one of the solutions is this application framework called Hydra. So uh, I'm going to t uh, tell you how you can use it. So we're going to start with a simple, uh, simple example. So this is like a minimal uh, version of a Hydra-based uh, application. In reality, it, it does, it's a toy example. It doesn't do anything other than log a, a hello message and the parameters of uh, a, a, an object we called model in the configuration here. But uh, I hope you can appreciate how minimal the boilerplate that Hydra adds to this example is because really what Hydra is adding is just this uh, decorator here and it's going to inject this config uh, uh, parameter into the main uh, experiment method. So um, what does this code do? Well if you run it it's going to uh, uh, log the co contents of a configuration file. So you need to have this configuration file uh, as well. With Hydra, you use YAML files. And if you have a, a model and its parameters defined like this, then when you run this very simple application, what it's going to print out is your hello and the parameters of the model from the configuration file. So far, very straightforward. What it did was parse the YAML file and pass it in as the configuration. So that's uh, the basics of what you would expect it to do. But immediately, out of the box, you get a couple of other features. So the first thing you get is you can ask hi, uh, your very simple application for some help. And that will uh, check the configuration uh, objects that are available to the configuration and, and list them for you. So you can, uh, you can inspect the different parameters of your application. And uh, it tells you here that you can override anything in the config with a, a dotted uh, path and a value. And so you can actually uh, do it this way when you can run your uh, script again, saying that model.a equals a different value and now it will actually equal this other value when you run it. So this way you can, uh, you can inspect your configuration parameters, you can set your configuration parameters at the command line uh, without having written much other than adding this Hydra decorator to your script. Um, 
But another thing that it does is every time you run your Hydra-based script, it produces a directory uh, of output files. And uh, by default, this uh, is set to a date and time that you, run, that you uh, started your script. The uh, main log of your application is stored in a, a file with the name of your uh, application.log. But there's also a .hydra directory, which contains three YAML files. And the config.yaml file is actually the effective final configuration that uh, was the product of all the overrides that, that you did, or maybe a, a configuration uh, file that uh, you provided. Hydra YAML contains all the settings of Hydra that were used during this run, and overrides are the things that were overwritten uh, by you at the command line. And if you want to, you can actually use this config.yaml file, this effective configuration that was recorded during this run, and uh, to do this, you just specify that you, you, Hydra should look in a configuration directory from your output.hydra and then use the config uh, configuration there. And when you run this, you will get your stored configuration and you're essentially be able to reproduce the previous run. So thanks to this, you get traceability and reproducibility of your experiment just by uh, serializing the configuration that was used into a YAML file that you can then use mm -hmm. as input to your next experiment run. Uh, so those are nice features of Hydra. One other nice feature is that it actually comes with a command line uh, completion. So you get tab completion for your uh, parameters as well. You need to execute this uh, eval in your shell, uh, which will generate code for a shell completion. And uh, then when you run your, uh, when you're on your uh, terminal and you uh, double tap the uh, tab after the model, it will suggest you the different parameters of the model that you can set. So that's very useful for being able to quickly set a couple of parameters that, that you want um, for your next experiment. Another cool feature of Hydra is multi-run. And uh, that allows you to run your experiment with a set of different parameters. So for example, here, we're telling uh, our, uh, our script that it should uh, launch the multi-run mode and that it should try to run with model A uh, parameters one and three and model B parameter values two and four. And it will make all the combinations of these values and start four different jobs and run each of them in sequence by default. And you will then get the results in the output directory of each of those runs and you can compare them and decide which one is best. So you can sweep through a lot of different uh, parameter values this way. So. I hope that you're getting the impression that with not a lot of additional code added to your experiment, you're getting a lot of features. And so that's what Hydra does. Now I want to talk about how it works and how its uh, internals are organized. So <clears throat> the components are, of Hydra are Omega Conf, which I will get to in a second. It also sets up Python logging for you. There are launchers that start your jobs, sweepers that are the thing that scans the different parameter spaces that you defined by providing the name, the, the, the values or ranges of values for each parameter. And it's also a modular architecture that uh, can be extended with plugins. So OmegaConf is actually a separate package that Hydra is based on. It's the YAML configuration manager, which uh, Hydra is based on. It was created by the same, uh, by the same uh, main of author, Omri, who created uh, Hydra initially, and you can, of course, install it from PyPI. Um, what does OmegaConf do? What, what comes from OmegaConf? Well, it's the parsing of the YAML configuration files. So uh, you can use OmegaConf to load up your, uh, your YAML files. And then this um, 
uh, object that is created when you load the, uh, the configuration is quite uh, flexible. So you can um, address your values, <coughs> read and set your values, either like this was an object or like it was a, a nested dictionary or even just with the dotted path uh, using the omega conf select function. So it's quite flexible, quite easy to use the configuration after it's loaded. Um, there's also a nice feature called variable interpolation, which means that inside of your YAML configuration, you can use some values from the configuration to define other values of your configuration. So it works uh, a little bit like in the shell, you have a dollar and curly braces that uh, you can use a value from defined uh, in the um, configuration as part of a value from uh, for, for another uh, for another configuration. So if you if you were to define these three foo bar and buzz and the uh, buzz used the previous two, you would actually get the combination hello Europe Python there. Another uh, useful feature of Omega Conf is called resolvers, and uh, resolvers allow you to add functions that uh, are able to take these configuration values and inside of the YAML file you can actually have a little bit of logic that will either uh, combine the uh, the other values or um, well in this toy example here we, we, we defined addition and it's very easy to add your own resolvers you essentially you essentially just call the omega conf register new resolver function and define whatever logic you need so these configuration YAML files, they're quite flexible uh, and allow you to do quite a lot just in the um, YAML file uh, themselves, thanks to Omega, uh, Omega Conf. But, um, and so that's the basis of uh, Hydra, what Hydra is uh, based on, but um, what does Hydra itself add? Well, Hydra itself adds all the all these other features. This it's an application development framework with uh, minimal boilerplate, and it's focused on managing all these configurations. So the first thing that Omega uh, that uh, Hydra adds is the ability to compose these uh, configurations from uh, from smaller files. So the idea is that you don't want to have a huge configuration file for your huge uh, experiment, but rather split it up into smaller sections. And each section can then define a different model or a different data set or a different optimizer, whatever, whatever object that has a set of um, configuration values that work together can be in a separate file, like it's in the, code, in the source code, it's defined in a separate file. So you split up big configurations into small file and then you combine them and back again uh, through, through composition. Hydra has interesting um, ways of thinking about these configurations. For example, each directory of YAML files is uh, called a package and it kind of works like a like a Python package or module that in that it uh, defines its own uh, namespace and it can be used interchangeably uh, there's also a concept of configuration search path kind of like the Python path so you can have these uh, configuration files live in different directories or different modules or they can be even imported from uh, for, for, from other packages that you install uh, together with Hydra. So mm, all these uh, things sound abstract, so let's, let's go through some examples. So the simplest way to combine uh, configurations uh, for, with, with Hydra is using the defaults, um, uh, defaults, mm, uh, 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 defaults directory or def defaults directive, which allows you to um, set some, some, some defaults from another file. So for example, if we have uh, an experiment configuration file called my experiment YAML, I can define defaults coming from a second file called training settings 
And if I have a second file called training settles that the settings.yaml, those defaults will populate the, uh, the, the configuration and I will override only the ones that I want. So I can have some, so, so, some uh, global defaults defined somewhere and override only the ones that I want in my, uh, in my experiment that I'm running right now. So uh, the effective configuration that you're going to get here from, from these two files is the combination of this and, of course, as you would expect, overriding this one specific value. You can also have uh, configuration groups. And configuration uh, uh, groups are subdirectories of YAML files. For example, you can have a subdirectory uh, called dataset. And inside of that subdirectory have different files for different data sets. You can have another directory for, called model and different mod files defining different models. And you can then combine them by uh, specifying in your defaults list that uh, the data set is named ImageNet and that will automatically, uh, Hydra will look inside the data set subdirectory for the ImageNet YAML file and the output will be the, uh, the, the content of the file taken from that, um, from that specific model definition or data set definition. Um, you can also um, override where you're going to use your, uh, your configuration groups. So we're getting a little bit uh, deeper into how, how you can use these uh, Hydra settings, but you can um, have one data set um, uh, file and reuse it multiple times by using this at symbol. Uh, so it's actually quite flexible. Uh, there's even a package directive that you can set at the beginning of a YAML file that will uh, say that everything in this particular file actually populates the, uh, the namespace hydra.joblogging. This is actually part of a configuration for a plugin uh, called color log that uh, makes the logs that Hydra outputs nice and colorful, which I also recommend. Okay, so um, the um, logging that comes with Hydra is just Python, regular Python logging, but it's set up for you out of the box. So the biggest pain, pain point of Python logging configuring it is done for you. Um, the, another nice feature that I really like about Hydra is uh, a utility function called instantiate. And it works like this, that when, if you have, um, if you add into your configuration file, the special keyword underscore target underscore, then you can uh, specify a dotted path to a class in your uh, code base, or in this case, PyTorch code base. And uh, if you then uh, call this Hydra Utils instantiate function on this configuration, it will look up this module, uh, import, uh, import it, and instantiate this class with, these, with this parameter. So that's quite useful for uh, keeping all of your uh, configuration together and making your uh, application quite flexible. Um, sometimes you may have a problem that some parameters that you need are only known at runtime, like with uh, in, in uh, case of PyTorch, if you want to define an optimizer, you need to pass in the model. So you first need to define the model and then you have the, uh, the optimizer. But uh, Hydra has another fun feature. If you add this underscore partial underscore um, uh, keyword to uh, your configuration, you can instantiate a partial. So you get a functools partial object with pre-populated with the uh, parameters that you specify but you can finalize the, com the, the creation of your optimizer in your code until you have the model uh, by, uh, by calling it um, in calling the, the partial when you're ready. So um, there's also type checking possible with Hydra. So 
because I have uh, not very much time, I'm not going to get into this, the details of this, but if you define data classes uh, that have the same uh, fields as the YAML file that you had before, you can, you can of course, annotate them with uh, types. And then by uh, calling the config store of Hydra, you can actually add them the as configuration. So essentially you're replacing the YAML with uh, with type annotated data classes, and then you can use that for MyPy by by um, specifying that the configuration object is this specific data class. And at runtime, it can even uh, point out that this is the wrong data type for a value if you if you see, if you specify it. So uh, there are quite a few things that you can do with Hydra beyond these, uh, the, these basics because of its plugin architecture. So uh, launchers are responsible for starting jobs. Sweepers are responsible for setting different configuration parameter combinations based on, uh, on the input. And there are plugins already for uh, all of these cool uh, workload managers, these, these uh, libraries and these libraries for scanning parameter values. So um, it's actually quite a powerful uh, way to start using also these, uh, these other tools. So I want to talk uh, very briefly about integrating Hydra with uh, MLflow, but um, first of all, what is MLflow? It's, uh, it's a application that is very easy to use for keeping track of your experiments. So uh, the simplest way to use it is just to start a server locally on your machine. For production, you might want to set up a database and a bigger server, but to get started with MLflow, all you have to do is just these two things. And then you will get an interface to your experiments where you can view your uh, your training uh, progress and results. And the way you uh, actually log uh, metrics into MLflow is very simple. So it fits in nicely with, with, uh, with Hydra. All you have to do is just import MLflow and start logging the metrics. It will automatically f uh, create uh, an experiment and, uh, uh, and run for you. And uh, how you can actually integrate uh, Hydra together with MLflow? Well, you can log artifacts into MLflow, so files. You can upload files into MLflow as well. So if you have the Hydra config, the effective configuration that you used for your experiment, you can log it as an artifact into MLflow. And that way, you can keep your configuration that's needed to reproduce this experiment together with the results of the experiments in MLflow. So it, it makes the, it closes the loop so you can have all your results together and the ability to reproduce them as well. Okay, um, I think that I have to finish. So my takeaways are that Hydra will make your experiments more easy to configure, traceable and reproducible, and thank you. Thank you very much for this great talk. Um, it was very interesting, at least for me. I, so are there any questions in the audience? If so, just come in front to the um, microphone. Hi, thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask, because I'm personally tracking experiments uh, in Neptune, but whatever you use, I think MLflow, Waste and Biases, or Neptune doesn't really matter. It's very similar. but what I noticed that during, let's say, initial phase of experimentation, we decide we want to track these specific parameters. And later in time, uh, and let's say we are training the model with, always with freezed initial uh, few layers, but then we decide, okay, we want to try new thing and maybe unfreeze some of those. And what is problematic for me is to retroactively populate those experiments with some default value. And is it somehow possible or doable maybe using Hydra or is it just uh, something that I, I, I would have to, to live with? 
Well, um, if you uh, if if you did this uh, and put your uh, configuration into your experiment uh, result tracking software, then if it has the ability to scan through your experiments, then you could extract any value that you didn't previously maybe add as a specific parameter from this uh, from this log into your experiment. Okay, so just go through all of it. Well, write a script for that mm -hmm. and append it. Okay, very simple. So the, the the first example you showed is, is just a decorator on a on a right. function. Yes. And then it kind of the the further stuff uh, you showed it kind of got more complex. Is it? Do you think it's easy to stop to keep this separate from your code and to prevent it kind of getting its claws into your code so that maybe in later later times you can swap it out for a different experimental platform. So the configuration itself probably is quite easy but when you start doing things like using the instantiate yeah. helper yeah. then it kind of becomes part of your of your uh, stack yeah. and it might be more difficult to to replace it later so i guess it depends on how much how many features you end up using right right okay good but yeah you think the the benefits of of, of using something like a Stantiate seems like it's worth the benefit of like allowing that into your code. You know, well, the idea is that it's it, it's very helpful and it's not a lot of code, yeah. so there's not that much of a downside. You don't so because it's not so much code. Yeah, great. Thank you. Looks good. Hi. Thanks for a nice talk. Uh, seems like an interesting uh, package. Um, I was wondering about this multi-run uh, functionality. Uh, you didn't mention anything about parallelizability. Mm -hmm. uh, is that because it doesn't exist yet, or and if so, is it something you're hoping to so, uh, implement? So the um, the plugins for Hydra are actually uh, solving this this issue. So um, by default, Hydra just launches jobs in sequence. On, an, on on the local machine that you have but th thanks to these these plugins that are able to uh, take advantage of backends like slurm you can actually uh, instead of running the job locally it just starts jobs and they run remotely and then they re report back so it's uh, check out these plugins if you're interested because they they do the parallelization for you cool thanks Hi, thanks for a great talk. Uh, <clears throat> do you have any uh, experience with PyTorch Lightning? Uh, I noticed you used uh, PyTorch for some of your exper uh, uh, examples. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. So <laughs> I guess <laughs> that's just it then. <laughs> no worries. Right. Okay, thank you very much for the talk. A lot of applause for the end. Uh, thank you.